The comparison between the Manchester riot sparked by the removal of a Romanian family, a Romanian child, into care and the Southput unrest incited by a right-wing social media encouragement reveals underlying issues of social disconsent and the misuse of information to inflame tension and, of course, the uh, presence in both cases of comments by Farage. Both incidents highlight the dangerous intersection of misinformation, xenophobia and socio-economic frustrations resulting in public order and violence. In Manchester, the removal of a Romanian family into care was perceived by some as an unjust act by social services, igniting tensions within the local community. Whether it was perceived or whether it was an unjust act, what was clear is that the sheer numbers of police who were engaged in dealing with that um, care order were excessive and foolish. The incident underscores the challenges faced by immigrant families, the complex role of social services in protecting vulnerable individuals, and balancing this against public perception. The images of the police being, the, the huge number of police being chased down the street, the images of the huge number of police involved in the um, removal of the child and the mother is simply staggering and shocking. And it parallels, in my mind, the huge, uh, to, to the huge numbers of police involved in the uh, detention of Tommy Robinson in a London cafe. Uh, all that time ago. The police are being misused and there, there used to be a principle of, of a softly, softly approach that no longer seems to occur. And the sort of policing that I'm referring to is the sort of policing that I would have seen in Greece, in Turkey, in Russia. And I couldn't possibly imagine that the police would then be people I could approach on the street to ask directions um, and I mean it didn't stop me I, I hasten to add I believe that the police force is there to support and I would defy any public in any public show of ferocity on the principle that the police are there to help and support um, me so 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 yes indeed I I have defied the image again and again, but I find that image abroad intimidating and I find the modern British image of the police force, particularly in these large numbers, intimidating. If I find it, then I'm sure there are others particularly who are coming into this country and who believe the illusion that our police force is friendly must be deeply shocked by it. But it doesn't it isn't an excuse for a riot. Uh, in Southport, the unrest was fueled by far-right rhetoric and misinformation, again Farage, notably from figures like Farage and outlets like RT, Russia Today, exploiting nationalist xenophobic sentiments and promoting fake news and easily believed by their followers who want to see a link with Islam. There was no link with Islam in the uh, Manchester riots. There was no link with Islam in the Southport attack. In both cases, the rhetoric was wrong. It, it illustrates how political opportunism, fake news, can exaggerate existing so social dif uh, differences, social divisions, leading to violent expressions of frustration and anger, and it doesn't take much. Both instances can be seen through the lens of information operations technology. 
where the dissemination of misleading or inflammatory information plays a pivotal role in catalyzing unrest. IoT here refers not only to the technology, but the spread of information and the manipulation of narratives to provoke reactions, demonstrating the deep vulnerabilities of societies to such tactics. The nature of riots, regardless of their cause, often embodies a rejection of the rule of law, which governments are rightly quick to condemn. And to emphasize the necessity of maintaining order. In Shakespeare's play, Thomas More, the only play for which we have a speech written in Shakespeare's hand, and it's not part of the traditional canon of Shakespeare's plays, but that speech is in the British Library and it captures the essence of such chaos. Uh, and, the, and the riot is about foreigners. Would you be pleased to find a nation of such barbarous temper that breaking out in heinous violence would not afford you an abode on earth? Wet their detested knives against your throat, spurn you like dogs! And yen like as if that God owed not nor made not you nor that the elements were not all appropriate to your comforts, but chartered unto them. What would you think to be thus used? This is the stranger's case. And this, your mountainish inhumanity. Uh, Shakespeare appeals to the idea. You, you might have foreigners among you, but they are humans. And when you, when you, the rioters, are thrown out of the country, are exiled because the king is going to have mercy on you and will not slaughter you, will not execute you on the spot, which is his right. You go to France and the French say to you, oh, welcome, you exiles from England. Why are you exiled? And what do you say? You say, because we are xenophobic, because we hate the French. Are you going to get... Are you going to get um, asylum there in France when you tell them the reason for your exile? It's such a brilliant speech. It's such a strong speech that emphasises the irrationality of rioters who, consumed by their own rage and fear, fail to see the humanity in others and the broader implications of their actions. It poignantly addresses the universal and the timeless nature of xenophobic nastiness and the dangers of succumbing to a barbarous temper. The varied causes of the riots were the socio-economic grievances, racial tensions, political manipulations, highlight the complexity of the cause of these events. But the riot itself is fundamentally something to be challenged and to be stamped on. Public discourse often reduces these situations to a binary choice, oversimplifying the factors at play. And while it's necessary to address and condemn lawlessness, it's equally crucial to understand and tackle the underlying causes that drive people to such extremes. But in the end, they are responsible for their own actions. The actions of social services in Manchester or the rhetoric of figures like Farage in Southport deserve scrutiny, but the broader issue of, so of society's discontent and the exploitation of such discontent, of such tensions for political gain is a common thread that needs to be stamped on. Farage, Tommy Robinson, and their ilk are out for a particular message. And in these two cases, the message doesn't fit the events, but it hasn't shut them up, has it? It hasn't stopped them speaking. And now the comments in the, in, in the YouTube and elsewhere on social media are saying, well, OK, these two events don't quite fit the narrative, but what about the others? What about this? What about that? This is whataboutism, isn't it? exposed as bigots, xenophobes, thugs and fools, the supporters of this ideologically insane movement say, well, well, oh, yeah, well, you don't, 
you're not consistent. You didn't condemn this. You didn't condemn that. You didn't do this. And what about the other events? Deal with the facts. Deal with the issues at hand. The issues are uh, at hand are very clear. And Farage lies right at the centre of both of them. Like a ungainly spider in his web. Actually, when, when we talk about spiders, maybe he should have a chat with Gavin Williamson. Gavin Williamson might be able to tell him what are the actual responsibilities of, a, of, a, a, of an MP and how to behave now he is an elected member for Clacton-on-Sea because he needs to learn his place.